Welcome back to News Talk. On the last day of his visit to the U.S., Pope Francis met with victims of the church sex abuse scandal. God weeps, Francis said, according to the Washington Post, in remarks delivered to an international collection of bishops and clergy gathered at St. Charles Borremio Seminary outside Philadelphia. Quote, it continues to overwhelm me with shame that the people who were charged with taking care of these tender ones violated their trust and caused them tremendous pain. Pope Francis met with the survivors, three women and two men, as a group and individually, and prayed with them, according to a news release from the Vatican. It was his second such meeting. He had celebrated Mass with six survivors last year. His meeting and promise to, quote, support your continued healing were heartening to some victims, advocates, and unimpressive to others. Joining us now, David Lorenz. He's with SNAP, the Survivors Network of Those Abused by Priests. Welcome back. It's good to have Thank you. Thank you for having me. In the lead up to the Pope's travels in the U.S., uh, there was an expectation he wouldn't be meeting with victims, and there was criticism of him for that. He did make time to meet. Yeah. Your thoughts? My thoughts are that uh, that's a great that he met with those five. It's great for those five. Um, I hope they've got some sense of healing and closure or whatever it is but nothing he did is going to help protect children nothing he did will heal uh, the tens of thousands of survivors who throughout the United States and the world and actually it's a hundred thousand um, throughout the world nothing he did will help those hundred thousand but more importantly nothing he did will help safeguard children there are so many things he could have done could have asked for the publication of all abusers, um, the diocese, all, each individual diocese. Now, some dioceses do do that, about 30 of them. But um, he could ask the diocese to publish the names of all the abusers or all those who covered up, and he didn't do any of those things. So he's not helping to protect children, unfortunately. The cover-up aspect of this is, is so pervasive. Mm. The, the uh, actions of higher-ups, I mean, any, anyone who knows about anything has the, it seems to me, the moral and legal requirement to alert authorities. And it's clear that for decades, in countless instances, that simply was not done. Yeah, and, and, and there's a number of cases, uh, a number of things to say about that. One is the, the Pope actually on the flight back admitted that there had been a cover-up. So we, we know that, but, but we knew that anyway. So, and the UN did an investigation of, two commissions on the UN did an investigation of the Vatican two years ago, and they, they um, took the Vatican to task for the cover-up in putting the institution ahead of the safety, the, the well-being of children. Um, the Vatican has asked for, um, both commissions have asked the Vatican to release documentation about how they handled sex abuse, and the Vatican has yet to respond to either of those requests. So they're, they're, they're not um, fulfilling their obligation to the, um, to, the, to the UN, to the International Committee. Um, but the other thing is, we, we, you're, you're hit, you hit the nail on the head. It's, it's, abuse is going, I, I've said it before, and I know this sh sounds shocking to some people. Anytime you mix children and adults, there is the um, threat that, a, that any adult could abuse a child. And that's going to happen in a little league, Boy Scouts, anytime children and adults mix, because somebody could go off the handle. What this is really about is that there was a cover-up, a systematic cover-up and enabling of priests um, who had abused children. And, and they moved them from parish to parish. And, and that's exactly where I was about to go. From everything I've read about this, and I've been reading about this for literally decades, yeah. you had higher-ups who were not themselves involved in abuse who, in essence, selected the next community of victims because when, the, when things got hot, they would say, well, we're going to move you know, we, uh, we know there's something going on with Father so-and-so. I don't want a scandal here on my watch, so let's move him. So that person who was not themselves doing the abusing was saying, okay, Phoenix or Kalamazoo, right. you're next because Father so-and-so is uh, has a new assignment, right. and it's your parish. Right. In, in, in some cases, the bishop would move him around from parishes within the diocese, and, and if he ran out of parishes, sometimes they would move him to a different diocese and sometimes to a different country. And, and um, there's just been a revelation that uh, we know of five priests who have, been, who have been recently, in the last year, moved from the United States, known abusers, moved from the United States, and are now serving in Latin America as priests. 
and, and no one's doing anything about that. So we, we've expanded the, this, this protection from within a diocese to another diocese within the United States. Now, we're, now, now it's going global. Pope Francis is so popular, and I think a lot of that popularity flows from the sense that he is uh, a, a change agent, a breath of fresh air, uh, saying and doing things that resonate yeah. uh, across our spectrum of believers, people of different faiths and non-believers. Does it disappoint you that he, from everything I hear you saying now, is falling short in this yeah. critical, critical area? Yeah, it, it, it's hard because he, even I kind of like the guy. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm very disappointed in what he's done or not done. Um, but, he, but he's a very likable guy, and I, you can't argue with that. Um, he goes out and reaches out, kisses babies, touches people, you know, uh, quadriplegics on the head, and blesses them. And, and seems that, and that's to really, really care. And really, it's a genuine thing. I, I think it's genuine. Um, but at the same time, he's asking, he, he, um, he is going, um, you know, with the uh, global warming and a bunch of other, you know, telling uh, countries to be more socially aware. And all of those things are great things. I don't want to take away from those things. Those are great messages. I'm glad he's saying them. Um, but those are all things external to what he can do. He can only um, uh, hope that other countries and people take that. He has a responsibility within his own church to fix the problem. And he can fix that. He could fix that. He could make, take measures tomorrow that would help fix this problem. It's not like global warming where he has to get other countries on board to help him do what he needs to get done. It is something he is responsible for and can fix tomorrow. He could demand that bishops publish the names. He could open up the, the records to show um, uh, what, what, how the church handled it. He could hold complicit bishops and those enablers uh, accountable and remove them from office. It's possible he still will. He's, um, I mean, he's not been in that long. He's having encounters with people where, over time, the importance of taking the sorts of steps you outlined here might um, might uh, sort of hit home. Well, he's been he's been in office for two years now, a little over two years, I think. Um, he's he claims he's going to set up a commission for holding bishops accountable. That that commission really hasn't met. That's been hanging around for a year. I, I don't know how much thought you have to give to the fact that um, uh, pet, you know, child abuse is wrong. Do we have to have a commission to find out that that's wrong? Or can we just say it's wrong? Um, I, we've had commissions. We, we've been studying, the Vatican has been studying this problem since 1985 when they were first made aware of it. And um, they, nothing really has happened. We have a, 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 a you know, zero tolerance in the United States only. No other country has a zero tolerance. It, it, the, the, the only place I know where you can be employed and be a pedophile is the priesthood. We, we, I only have a few seconds left. How often, I've had the chance to meet and talk with uh, folks who are involved in SNAP over the years, how often do you get, does someone reach out to you and say, I'm ready to come to grips with the fact that this happened to me, can you help me get started in terms of the healing? All the time, all the time. We have, we have a hotline, and of course it, it comes and it goes, um, depending on what's going on in the news, and of course the Pope being around. But we get calls all the time about people um, ready to come out, people who have been out, but kind of um, slink back and then, and then they have a crisis moment. Right. Something reminded them. I'm glad you're there uh, when those calls and emails do come in. Thank David you. Lorenz with the Survivors Network of Those Abused by Priests. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me. I appreciate, we appreciate it. it. Back with more in a moment.